to show you is Endless Spires. Um, actually, I don't really want to show Endless Spires right now. I'm lazy. I'm really lazy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, Glitterhelm Cavern. If you do not have the DLC to be able to do Tavern Defense, or if for some reason Tavern Defense is too hard for you, Glitter Helm is going to be a great place to get experience to level up. You want to make sure you're using hardcore mode whenever you're leveling, of course. We're just going to be doing it on insane because I want to show this off for people, you know, lower stats. I don't want this one to be just about for, you know, the high, high stats. So, now, when you're doing it on insane instead of nightmare, you're not going to have spiders. You're not going to have to worry about as much stuff. So, it's going to be a lot, lot easier. We can definitely build a lot differently. We don't really need ores as much. Uh, as ores do use up a lot of the use. So, we're just gonna hop in here. Of course, we're gonna start off campaign. Love to start off with those traps. That's just, you know, a thing of mine. Notice our traps are also gonna be, you know, they have, they'll have a lot more health, I do believe. Do they in, in insane compared to nightmare? I wanna say, I know they're bigger range. So anyways, first things first, we're gonna set up our gas trap. Just to make sure that the enemies get stuck on that. And let's see, how much, what am I going to have on my proximity mine trap? Yeah, more HP. Okay, yeah. So more HP. So I'm going to be willing to use a proximity mine trap. It's definitely not going to run out as easy. Oops. So that's the first thing. You know, a gas trap with a proximity mine is going to take care of almost everything on the first wave. Provide okay damage on your traps. You know, and you have enough health and all the yada, yada, yada. So that's nice. Uh, there's also going to be some birds that come in from this direction too. That we're going to have to watch out for as well. I'm not going to do anything quite, quite yet. I will be end up placing a tower there in a bit. So now the next area that we want to defend from, of course, is this this wall right here. Oops, no, no, I don't want to build there. So I'm going to place my gas trap kind of down here just because it makes it easier to buff is why, the reason why. It's going to end up making it a lot easier to buff me. And of course, doing the proximity line. Now notice, enemies almost never come up this way. They pretty much never come up this way. So that's, you know, something knowing about the map, useful information to know about the map, lets you have an advantage. So we don't want to buff, because we're not going to be using auras to kill stuff this time, I don't want to buff, or I don't want to gas anything around the corner. Usually you would gas things around the corner, that's really great. You know, you can have your um, auras killing them around the corner and your towers can just deal with the ogres, plus prevent sharks from being able to charge your stuff, but we're on insane right now, so we don't actually have to worry about that, that's pretty sweet. Okay, once again, I just want to, uh, I want to make sure that I can um, buff my proximity mine trap, so that's what I'm going to be building at the top of the stairs. Uh, just makes it much, much easier to do my buffing by doing it this way. And, of course, not too enemies, many enemies come down this way. The odd one does sometimes, so we might need something for that. But first off, let's finish here. We're going to be doing, once again, blocking this pathway off here. Proximity and gas. Now, this area, interesting to note, there's air spawns that come from there. There's air spawns that come from over there. So you're definitely going to have to deal with a lot of anti-air. And, well, you could use a proximity mine trap here to help deal with the little guys that are coming through. You can use minions. There's a lot of options there. Uh, for now, I'm just not going to do anything too big there. And now we're going to swap out, and I'm going to start doing my harpoons right away. You could definitely do minions here. I wouldn't suggest doing your buffs or your auras yet, uh, with it being campaign. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a harpoon. Let's get it behind the crystal. Ah, come on. I'm going to just try and line it up so that it's killing these birds, you know, in the flight path that they have. That's not actually ideal. Let's move it over just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That should be the flight path for those birds. Um, that's good. I don't have to rush down to the south. Yeah, I do to deal with those air spawns. I definitely do. Okay, so now I'm going to have to rush down to the south and put something to deal with the birds. Thank you for the mana, but I probably missed it all. That was pretty good, though. He really, he really tried to um, make sure that he dropped the mana before I got there, so that way I would run into the mana. My stream's still live, guys. Can someone in the chat just confirm that? Okay, so now we got some interesting things we want to do because of the air spawn. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have this rotated so that it can shoot the air as well as the enemies coming in. And I'm going to want a harpoon that's dealing with the air coming from the back here as well. 
actually, you know what, but this harpoon, it'd be kind of useless to have it only shooting at the air and nothing else. So what you can do here is you can actually have it shoot at the air and have it rotated to deal with any enemies coming from down there. So that's just a nice little thing you can do, kind of a tip, I guess you could say. And I'm going to have one more harpoon here to help deal with, you know, the main things coming from the front as well as the, whatever they're called, uh, the air. There we go. And now in this place, kind of what I'm hoping to do here is I kind of want to be able to just use um, one buff beam. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to build my harpoons in a line. And that way I'll just be able to use just the one buff beam for hopefully everything. And of course, doing some rotation, even though there's really nothing that comes this way, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. It's kind of nice to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to use a bowling ball tower here just because I can. You know, because, yeah, it's awesome. Bowling balls rolling down the stairs. Why not? Yeah. Okay, so once again in this area, uh, I'm going to use a bowling ball tower just because I can. Actually, how do their HP compare to harpoons? Nowhere near as good, so I want to place it kind of in the back. That's actually what I want to do. So now we're going to have a harpoon shooting down there, and I'm, the other thing I want to try and do is I want to try and have, it would be nice if I get a harpoon that covers there and there, just in case enemy enemies come from the back. Sadly though, it doesn't look like it wants to let me do that, so I'm not going to try too hard. And I need to pick up some more mana is what it's telling me the game. Yeah, this place is pretty decent. It's it's good for EXP, but tavern defense is the best. Okay, so we're going to do a bowling ball tower just because I like them. No other reason. So far we've got nothing that's potentially guarding from this other way if enemies do come this way. So, you know, usually you want to just have a cheap something to guard that way. You don't want to spend a lot of DU on anything, so... Um, okay. So now, now of course we want to have bunch of harpoons and other stuff to deal with, you know, our friends the ogres that will be over Ow! There's one of them, our friends the ogres. <laughs> okay, and harpoons, harpoons, harpoons are so much fun. Harpoons, harpoons, harpoons all day long. Harpoons all day, harpoons all night, harpoons, harpoons, harpoons. Okay, so... Now I'm ready to move on to my buff beams. So, um, I've got enough, you know, everything is kind of going to hold. We want to have some walls maybe now. Uh, this map, you know, if you're doing an insane campaign, if you really are having trouble with it, you can end up adding the minions, but, you know, really, you're kind of hoping that you don't have to add minions when you're doing this map. Of course, I didn't, oops, I didn't plan out these very well with the buff beams uh because of the traps i should have lined them up you know more like in a line so that, that way i could just do one buff like this and catch everything but that's all right not the end of the world and i'm just gonna throw up a wall although this might get charged by sharks it's hard to say um actually you know what my harpoons have a lot of health i don't even need the wall so we're just gonna throw up a reflect just to prevent some of that extra damage from the first poison ball dealing dealio Yay, I'm live. Awesome. Welcome to my stream, guys. How are you liking the quality? Yeah, there's no sharks because I'm on insane. You're right. Totally forgot. Okay, so see, as I said, I just wanted to be able to use one buff beam to get all of this. Nice. Got it done. I'm definitely going to want to use some walls here, though. Because uh, that's really close to the crystal. You know, if the ogres start clubbing it. I, yeah. So I'm going to just throw up a couple of walls. And then I'm going to come down here. Similar idea. Oh, looks like someone already buffed that. So, so that's definitely not my buff beam. As you can see, he knew what I wanted to do anyways. Just buff all of those. Of course, the only thing is if you're really short on DU, you could um, probably make this buff beam a little bit short. Oh, no, it's buffing the prox trap. That's why it has to be that long. Yeah. The other thing is you can make it longer to buff the walls. Uh, buffing your walls can be really useful. Give them a lot of extra life. But at the same time... You don't always need to. If you're killing the trash mobs, you you know you can get away without it. So just to prevent the enemies that are coming this way, I'm just gonna build a simple shock beam. There we go. Uh, that should deal with anything coming there. Hopefully, hopefully it's strong enough. Okay, so I can't make that five unless you know I could buff it onto here, but whatever. I'm not too worried. 
about doing that. So we're just gonna go with, you know, reflect beam, make that six, be nice and lazy. Okay, proximity mine, get it upgraded. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> no, I don't want to do Temple of Love today. Stop asking, please. Of course, throw up some reflect beams. Now you'll notice there's a big difference between how uh, my other tutorials on Nightmare go about building and how tutorials on Insane go about building. Uh, on Insane, you don't have to deal, you know, there are certain maps on Insane where you're going to have to deal with some nasty enemies. But in general, on Insane, you're not going to have to deal with Shark and usually you don't have to deal with Spiders, you don't have to deal with Goblin Choppers, you don't have to deal with Jin. So we can build a lot, lot differently. We don't really need... Um, you know, be using things like auras. Now, auras are really useful. They're very, very versatile. They do a lot of fun things. But when it comes to actual damage for DU costs, they don't do a lot. Insane, we don't really need all those special fancy abilities. So we can get away with having, you know, a lot of damage to just kill things with damage. We don't really need to slow stuff down if we have a lot of damage to kill it. Uh, you know, we don't need, like, the reason why you really need ensnare ores on Nightmare is enemies move a lot faster on Nightmare than they do on Insane. Also, you've got to slow down those goblin choppers so they don't shoot rockets as fast at you and don't do as much damage. You've got to slow down the shark and so they don't charge you. So that's why you kind of need those ensnare ores on Nightmare, but Insane, you don't have those big problems. You don't really need to slow down the enemies as much. And we've still got the gas trap, we've got proximity mines, you know, we're still going to be able to kill a lot of them before they get to our towers and stop a lot of them with the gas traps. Strength drains, you don't need as much strength drain because not as many enemies are resistant to elemental damage. You know, they're still useful to have, but they take up a lot of DU. Also, you know, ogres and other enemies don't deal as much damage, so you might not need the strength drain's ability to remove damage. You can still, you still might want strength drains, especially if you're doing survival. But, you know, it won't be as important to have those strength drains. And then also, the lightning auras, you know, the lightning auras are amazing at killing the trash mob. They kill a lot of little things, but, you know, they don't deal the most damage, and they take up a fair amount of DU. It's, you know, it's more beneficial to build something that does way more damage than the lightning, um, or something that costs less D DU, such as a proximity mine trap. Because, you know what? You know, we're not building the other auras. It's really not, like... The lightning, yeah, they're still good, they're still useful, but it's just not quite the same on Insane. You know, like, it's, they're great, they get massive, and you, for survival, sometimes they're awesome. They're really, really good at dealing with air. But, you know, there are times where you can say, oh, hey, you know what? It's probably going to be worth my time and effort to spend my DU on something else right now. Not always, but it depends on the map. But you can see that you can definitely get away without auras on Insane compared to Nightmare is one of the big things that I really wanted to showcase here. So. And also you can get away without minions a lot more. Like minions are still great to have. They add a lot of free damage to your build, especially on survival. You know, you definitely want to have those minions just because it's basically free towers is the way I like to think about them. So, you know, but on campaign it takes a long time to build minions. You won't always need them. The minions are really useful for a few things. One. Minions, of course, they're free, so that always makes them good no matter what. Like, they use MU instead of DU is what I mean by free. Uh, but really, really important is they can shoot down choppers even when choppers are shooting their flares. They don't get distracted by chopper rocket flares. So that prevents, you know, that allows them to take out the choppers much, much faster. They can turn 360 degrees. This makes them awesome anti-spider defense. You know, they can turn any direction and they can shoot down spiders no matter where they are. They can shoot air from any direction, so they're really good that way. Also, the minions, uh, they're pretty good too in terms of the mages can heal archers and stuff. So, you know, you can put a bunch of minions on a buff beam if you have a lot enough health. And they make a wall, basically. And then you can use that wall of minions. And you can have, a, you know, mages healing them. Suddenly you've got really, really good walls. They will get attacked by ogres on, like, the physical walls. So, you know, it's kind of a little disappointing that way. But, at the end of the day, they make some pretty cool walls. And, yeah, so, you know, you can get away without them, but they're really awesome. But as, you know, the big thing is that they're able to shoot down the special, the special hero enemies that come with the nightmare mode. Of course, some of the harder maps on Insane will have those special enemies. But that's why you can kind of get away without them, uh, if, you know, 
because they do take quite a while to build. And as I've said, you know, most of the traps are really useless until you get to a very high level of play. So, you know, most of the traps can be ignored other than gas. Proximity Mine is a great, great map, but usually it doesn't have enough charges to last very long without being repaired. So usually I don't suggest it, but insane, your traps get more charge counts. So they become useful, a lot more easier to use again. You know, it's a nice little touch. Oh man, Tornado Stance is so much fun. Whee! <laughs> I jump so high, I jump so far, I move so fast, cause I've got tornado stands on my barbarian. And I'm an Amazonas too, I'm not some slow tavern keeper. I move so fast, I'm a barbarian with tornado stands. Do you like my song? I sing it when I run around, making dreams come true. Anyways, I gotta go soon probably, but this is my last video anyways. I'm supposed to be picking up a buddy. I got his truck. I was the designated driver last night, so I have his truck still. Got to return it to him, and then we're going out for breakfast. So, yeah. I'm not falling off the map, because I'm awesome like that. Okay, I'm going to check the Twitch chat, guys, again. I know I haven't really been reading it. Um, no, no, no. When it comes to traps, to be able to buff a trap, all you have to do is have it touch any part of, well, yeah, the dark circle. Not the inside where it's hollow, but just the edge. Any, if we look right where my cursor is, that's the edge of the trap. You just have to have your buff beam touching the edge of the trap. The other thing too, of course, is you can put a buff beam on a trap to make it bigger, and then you can add another buff beam to the edge of the trap, upgrade that buff beam, and then sell the first one, and then your trap will stay big. So that's an, a trick there. Um, let's see, uh, congratulations on getting a level 100, that's awesome. Um, no, I, I wanted my barb to be kind of pink, so, you know, I found the arm guards. I found the arm guards, and then, I, I was already going for a pink girly color on my Amazonist, so. It's just too bad, you should see the sword, the, the, uh, what I did to my sword on open. I gave it a pink glow in the middle. Oh man, it looks sick. So sick. Uh, female barbarian skin. Is it Karathiki? Oh, okay. Yeah, I always had it. I just didn't know. <laughs> yeah, Akatiti is ridiculously hard. Ridiculously hard. It's a very high level map. Okay, we're gonna go tornado. I like my tornado. I'm gonna run around just so fast. Splashing things with my sword, if my towers didn't kill him already, I love my tornado, running around like a fool, gonna fall off the map, no I'm not cause I'm cool. I really wanna like jump out there, kill him, and then jump back on. Nope, killed myself. I didn't think I'd make it. Anyways guys, that is the tutorial for Glitter Helm Caverns on Insane, for getting experience, and also just showcasing some of the different ideas between building for Insane and Nightmare. Hope you guys liked this tutorial, hope you guys had some fun, and I hope you guys love playing Dungeon Defenders. And of course, make sure you guys are signed up for the community events that we do. They've been pretty awesome lately. Do you like my singing? Cause I'm just so good. I can sing, but like amazing. I just wanna reach the stars. I just want to hear your voice. See, I can't sing well like that at all. But I can sing with the raspy, broken voice. I don't think this counts as raspy today. <laughs> I'm a dead barbarian, because I landed in the lava. It's not really too much fun. But I get to watch the bowling balls go down and smack some things in the face. <laughs> Uh, nice. Anyways, guys, just so you know, I'm going to be doing another giveaway in the near future. I have a lot, a lot of cubes to give away, and I'll probably be giving away some old event items from the last, like, month. Like, they're not old, but just, you know, some leftovers from the last month. I may or may not be doing the event items. I'll have to double check on that one, but definitely I've got some cubes I'm going to be giving away. Ah, uh, Earth Shaper. Did I get a sick Earth Shaper? Ooh, that's a cool sword. 